Um, all right, so at this point, we have the locations of our trials added. We have all of our germplasm lines in the database. So at this point, we're going to add the trials to the database. So the UK use case that we're going through is that these trials already exist. You've already designed the, the trial design for them. So we already know the plot layouts and we wanna add those existing trials to the database. So there are multiple ways to add trials to BreedBase. There's a trial design tool if you wanna interactively create the trial on the website. And I think Jessica might demonstrate that in her talk later. Um, but for this example, we're gonna be adding an existing trial. So you can get to all of these tools by going to the Manage Field Trials page. And then up here, there are two buttons. So there's this button, Design New Trial, to create a trial using the website. And it has an interactive wizard that will ask you questions about the trial metadata and the design type. Uh, and then if we're adding an existing trial, there's this button here, which is Upload Existing Trials. If you see on the second step here, there are two ways to add in an existing trial. So you can add a single trial in which the upload template just includes the plot information, or you can upload multiple trials where the spreadsheet includes both the trial information and the plot information. If you look at the single trial, the next step for this is filling out a form with all the trial information. So this can be tedious if you're doing multiple trials because you have to fill out this form on the website for each one. So that's why they added this feature here, adding multiple trial designs. So all that trial information that you would have filled out on that form can be added to the spreadsheet and you can add you know, multiple trials at once with one form. So we'll be using the multiple trial design spreadsheet format for this example. So again, that includes both the trial level information as well as the plot, plot level information. And you don't have to fill out a form on the website, you just have to upload the, the spreadsheet. So there's a lot of information that can be included in this trial upload template. So the trial properties are listed here and there's quite a few required properties. So the first is a trial name. And this has to be a unique name for the trial and it has to be unique across the entire database. And it's also important to note that it cannot contain any spaces, but it can contain special characters such as underscores and dashes. So by convention, T3, we typically use some sort of an experiment code which groups similar trials. So this is an, ex an experiment code in this example, followed by a year, and then followed by the location, and they're delimited with an underscore. So this is just a unique way of creating a, a name for this trial that you know, should be unique because there should not be any other trial for that year and location for that experiment code. The breeding program column, again, includes the name of the breeding program that managed that trial. And one thing to note is that for the cooperative nurseries, what we've done on T3 breed base is we've created these sort of meta breeding programs for each of the cooperative nurseries. So for example, we have a breeding program that's specifically for the winter wheat scab nursery. And that allows us to keep all of those nursery trials together under that same breeding program. So if you're doing a nursery, trial, you would you try to use these nurseries breeding programs and not the breeding program of the university that actually performed the trial. The location is the name of the location that the trial was performed in. And again, this must already exist in the database. That's why we added uh, Geneva as a location already. The year is the year the trial was held. The design type is one of these codes. That, are, that is used to indicate the trial design. The description is required and it's a short description of the trial and then can include any additional notes with any additional re uh, relevant information about the trial. And then the rest of these properties are optional, but definitely include them if you know them. So the trial type can be used to distinguish between different types of trials. 
So we can distinguish between an advanced yield trial versus a preliminary yield trial, or you can just specify a general phenotyping trial. The plot dimensions can be given in the plot width and plot length columns. Um, those are given in meters, the field size if it's known in hectares, and then the planting and harvest date if it's known at that point um, in, in the year month date format here. And all of these properties can be updated later. So if you've created a trial and it's been planted, so you can add the planting date. If it hasn't been harvested yet, you can go back and modify the harvest date on the website and add it later. Um, then down here we have the plot level properties. So again, we have some required properties and then some optional ones after that. So we have to give each plot a plot name. So again, this has to be a unique name and it has to be unique across the entire database. And again, it cannot contain spaces. So the easiest way to do this is by convention, we concatenate the trial code with the plot number. So it's just trial code dash plot one, two, and so on. And that should, since the trial name is unique and you only have you know, one plot one in each trial, that should be enough to be a unique plot name. The accession name is the name of the accession that's observed in each plot. And again, this already, it must exist in the database. So we've already added the two missing uh, germplasm lines to the database. We need to know the plot number and the block number. Is a control can be used to uh, flag the checks in the trial. So you can add a one for all of the checks. And then we have rep number range, row, and column number for the position of the plot in the field. And then if you're using the seed lots feature, you can give the name of the seed lot here, and then either the number of seed that are used for that plot or the weight of the seed that are used for the plot. And this will add a transaction to the seed lot uh, when you create the trial. So if you're managing seed lots, this is helpful because it can automatically add transactions to that seed lot to um, deduct the amount of seed that's been used for that plot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, since there's a lot of information here, I'm going to go ahead and actually create this trial template uh, for you. So I'm going to start with the blank trial template. I'm going to open that up. And then what I'm also going to do is download the demo data. Actually, it's up here. I already had that. So I have the demo data on the right of the screen here, and then the blank trial template on the left. So the first column here is that we need the trial name. So I'm going to give this a trial code, followed by a year, and then the location for the first location. The breeding program is Cornell University. The location is the name. The, of the location, so that's the town and the state name. Year is 2019. Design type is that code for the design type. And then a description, this is a Cornell Advanced Yield Trial 2019 at Ithaca. The trial type is an advanced yield trial. And then we'll say the plots are one square meter. You can leave the field size blank. And then we'll add a planting date. And then because Excel is annoying, we'll format these as text so that way they don't get converted into Excel date format. So this is all of the trial level information that we need for this trial. And what I'll do now is I'll just copy the plot numbers from this template into the plot number column here, as well as the line names. 
and then we can expand these columns out. So the trial level information has to be duplicated for each plot, which is a little annoying, but just have to expand that information out for each plot. Uh, okay, a couple of questions have come in. Do we have a convention as to whether the, the trial year is the harvest year or the planting year? And I guess I don't, I'm not sure. I think That's it, a good question. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm not sure what's typically used for like a, a winter crop. Couple, a couple um, votes have come in that it should be the harvest year. So let's Let's make a convention now. Let's All have right. it be the harvest year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and and Clay Sneller asks, could the location be the five letter or whatever the code instead of the writing it out in full thing? That's a good question. I haven't tested that. Um, I would imagine you probably can, since and I'm not sure what like else. Clay Burkett thinks that. Clay Burkett thinks you have to use the um, location name in full. So okay. tap city comma state. Yeah. Okay. Um, Better to use the name than the, the code then. We definitely know that works. Yeah. Do the template columns have to be in this order or can you rename the column names uh, and put them in a different, or and not, don't, rename the column names, but put the column names in a different order, I guess. I would keep them in the same order. Uh, I think it varies. I think for an accession template, some of those optional properties can be varied in order, but I think for some others, the order matters. So I think just to be on the safe side, always keep the columns in the same order. Seems like that would be a nice feature to add, though. I mean, if yeah. we're going to bother putting column names on there, we might as well have the the reader, the parser, recognize the column names right. and, and use those. Yeah. So we'll right. put that on our to-do list. Yeah, that would definitely be more user friendly. Yeah. David, don't worry. I'll, I'll we'll save the chat here, and and that'll serve okay. as a basis of just deciding on a whole bunch of new to-do things. Okay. Can we use a function um, here? Uh, more well, just a question about if, if breed-based can randomize experiments, and yes, it can. So if you, uh, in fact, I, I, I think it would be great if people moved toward using breed-based um, to actually randomize their experiments. That way the experimental design is already in the, mm -hmm. in the database before you even upload it. Yes. And you can create multiple locations at once too. So you can create multiple trials in the trial design tool. Uh, neither the planting dates nor the harvest date, I believe are required, um, but they're, they're really useful for, for future, like, like metadata for future use. Um, and, you know, I mean, this is the whole idea of public breeding or, or public data in general and why, um, granting agencies want data to become public is that people then go and reuse that data in ways that you, the originator, did not think of. Uh, but for that to be possible, the more metadata you add to your to your data, the, the more easily it will be reused. And for experiments, planting and harvest date is going to be key, for example, for um, going to get the weather data for mm -hmm. that that existed during your trial and then all of a sudden you you open up all kinds of opportunities for crop growth modeling uh that would track your track your data so um you can leave these uh, you can leave this metadata open but as much as possible we had, we would like it to be filled in yeah definitely and you can leave it blank for now when you're uploading the template and you can add it later. But it definitely, if you know it, we definitely like to have that information. All right, so for the plot name here, I'm just gonna use a formula that concatenates the trial name, the dash plot, and the plot number. 
the way we have something like this for the plot name. And then the rest of this information, we just copy from the demo data set. So we have block number here. Rep number here. And then range and row and column number for the plot positions. Um, lots of good questions. Yeah. So can one Excel file or one sheet have more than one trial? Yes. And I'll show you the, the one that I already created once I'm done here. But basically what you would do is just continue with another trial down here. So you would have your second trial name and all of the second trial level information followed by the plot names for that second trial. So I can show uh, you what that I, looks like in a little bit. Clay Sneller's happy. We like that. Yeah. And then what we can do is add flags for our controls for Bess and Ernie. We just add ones to this column for the controls. And then the others can either have a zero or can be left blank. So this is everything that we need for a single trial. And then what I can show you now, is the one that I already created for this demo set. And you can see here we have one trial here for Ithaca, followed by a second trial for Geneva. So again, it's just all the trial information and then separate plot names for the Ithaca and Geneva locations there. So you can do this for as many trials as you need to. All right, so now what we'll do is we'll upload that template. So to do that, go to the Manage Field Trials page. Click the Upload Existing Trials button here. And then on the second step, you wanna make sure that you select the multiple trial designs here. And then we choose the file. We have Demo Trials. Now it takes a minute to upload the trials. And then we get a success message here. We can reload the page. And then you might have to press this refresh button to get the new trials in this uh, folder tree here. And then we see our two trials listed here under the breeding program. So we can open up those. So here we have all the trial level metadata here. And then if we wanna edit some of this later, you can go to this edit button here. So for example, the planting and harvest dates, you can add those at a later point or modify them uh, in this edit trial dialog here as well as any of the other information. And then one thing I wanna show you is in this field layout section here, you get a, um, an actual layout map of the different plots with the different reps, different colors, and then the dark blue are the checks. So you can visualize the layout of the trial here. So at this point, we have two trials that have all their metadata and the plots loaded but they don't have any um, observation data yet. Um, any more questions about adding trials? Let's see. Uh, so Karen had asked if there's um, still a way to upload trials if there's not information about the plot maps. And we can still add information. We can still add trials if we don't have the plot layout information. Uh, what we do is basically just set them in a single row 
um, in a you know an unknown order. So it's basically just a random order. So it has sort of a, a meta layout, but it's not an actual physical layout. So they're basically just represented as a, a single row of plots.